How cool did that look? So cool. Today's episode is being filmed on the Fujifilm X-T4 and I need to clean my car. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. We are spending a very cloudy, misty day out here in the high country today. Now I'm gonna be spending this very, what looks like blue and cold autumn day with the Fujifilm XS10 today. You know, the light today as it is, I hope it changes, but if not, you know, cloudy white balance. I'm gonna play with some of the Fujifilm film simulation modes, you know, try to get some more interesting colors and shots out of this. And honestly, we've seen what this 26 megapixel sensor can do. It's been in a lot of other Fuji cameras. So really, today I really wanna focus on how this camera is designed differently from the XT cameras and how that's gonna change my experience today. So the XS10 might be at more of an entry level price point, but it's really designed to win over DSLR users to the mirrorless world. And what DSLR cameras often give you is a lot of control buttons, customizable buttons and dials. And so I love that they have not skimped on that on this XS10 at all. We've got three dials, they feel high quality. I like that they're not labeled or specifically set for exposure compensation like you'd find on the XT cameras. It's fully customizable. You can set this up however you like it. You got an ISO and a quick button up here on top that of course you can customize to do different things. And then very curiously, there was a button here right next to the EVF, which I thought would be a really ridiculous placement and totally useless. But actually when you hold the camera with the grip, you can easily move your thumb over and press it. So it's actually in a very useful position. You know, I would say that the XT cameras are really trying to mimic a sort of classic, manual focus, vintage camera. This is really trying to mimic a more modern digital SLR design, but I love that Fuji is not pigeonholing you in any way with the XS10. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced photographer, you can set this up to work exactly the way you want it to. Now, one of the standout features by far on the new Fujifilm X-S10 is the fact that we have IBIS in this body, an in-body image stabilizer. Now, it's a bit of a smaller mechanism than the X-T4. Fujifilm says it's about half a stop less effective, but it is more effective than the X-H1. But the real claim to fame here is gonna be the fact that this is a small light camera. You could use it with a lot of the small F2 primes, for example, and those primes are not stabilized. So now we've got a package which is stable with all those lenses. So I'm just looking at this scene and I like it, but I'm waiting for light to hit that mountain opposite, but also for the wind to stop blowing on the water so I get that nice clean reflection. Oh, that might be it. Jordan, duck your head. Okay, now we absolutely have to talk about the grip though on this camera because that's one of the big design changes. Uh, you know, it's very reminiscent of the X-H series, but uh, you gotta think like the cameras like the X-T, the X-100, they've always had very small grips and I really like this. I mean, it's got the looks of an X-T30 superficially, but that grip just makes it look a little bit more like a classic SLR and it's very functional and comfortable to use. They've turned that MP126W battery sideways. It fits nicely. Your SD card goes right beside it. Uh, and the grip, even if you have larger hands, still gives you enough space to get your pinky on there. So I think if you were even using longer lenses, you know, wildlife applications, and you didn't need weather sealing, this might actually make more sense than even like an X-T3 or X-T4 camera, just to give you that comfort uh, and the lightweight design of it. And the only thing I am gonna say about the grip that I might not like, the spacing from the grip to larger lenses like the 90 mil F2 that I'm using, it is a pretty tight space and my knuckles are rubbing right against that metal knurled aperture ring quite a bit, not super comfortable. And frankly, I don't have very thick fingers. So someone with larger hands might find that a bit of a squeeze, but on a lot of the prime lenses and stuff, it's gonna be a non-issue. Now, as you may know, I'm a big back button autofocuser. I like using the AF on button to focus my cameras. Now, Jordan has found on many X-T cameras that the position of the AF on doesn't suit his grip or his hands. Whereas 
I found it less problematic, but still not ideal. But it just goes to show that different people are gonna have different requirements for what feels comfortable. Now on the XS10, Jordan and I actually both prefer the position of the AF1 button here. It is much more comfortable. But on top of that, I've got an AEL button right next to it, and I've got that third button next to the EVF, and I can set any of those up to focus with. So really the XS10 lets anybody make this camera work for them. And I just can't help but feel like this camera is one of the best designed cameras for me specifically as a photographer. So I just want that sign contrasted more against the light grass. So that's why I'm doing the high angle here. And lo and behold, we have ourselves a fully articulating LCD back panel, which for Jordan and I, we really love. Hybrid shooters doing video are gonna like that too. I know some of you photographers won't like that, but it's a bold choice on this camera, bold choice. So the EVF's not gonna blow anybody away. You know, at only 0.63 times magnification, 2.36 million dots, it's pretty much on par with a lot of the other entry-level cameras that would be competing against this, but yeah, you know, you can get 100 frames per second as a refresh rate if you put it into performance boost mode. That does help a little bit, but you know, it's pretty par for the course. This is really what we're seeing on a lot of cameras at this price point. So as I mentioned at the top of the video, I'm gonna be using a lot of Fujifilm simulation modes on this camera today, cause it's fun and I wanna spice things up and just kinda of play with color, right? I think I get to do that once in a while. And uh, I like that it's got, you know, some of my favorites like Classic Neg that the new processors have. I think that's one of the nicest new profiles they've made. We've got the usual standbys. I'm using Velvia a lot today to add some punch, but certainly Astia, the softer profile, Provia, their standard profile, and all the others, you know, turn of bleach bypasses there for the four people that might be interested in that profile. I can even set up a command dial if I want to just cycle through them really quickly. And you know, it's interesting, a lot of the entry level Fujis were now starting to have this really cool before and after mode where you could see what your photo would look like normally and what your photo would look like with the Fujifilm simulation mode side by side. That is sadly missing here and that's kind of strange. There is one interesting new feature though that existing Fujifilm users probably aren't gonna care about, but when you do go into the Fujifilm simulation modes and you're selecting them, you can hit the Q button and it'll actually give you some historical information about that particular mode, what film stock it was based on, what kind of look it has, what situations it might be best suited for. And you know, we gotta remember there's a lot of people now shooting photography that may have been born after a lot of these original film stocks were discontinued even. I scratched my money maker getting photos oh. for you all, so the least you could do is just hit that subscribe button. That'll make this magically heal. Now the XS10 can certainly hold its own if you're doing more difficult photography like sports and action. It shoots eight frames per second and it can actually push that to 30 frames per second in its electronic shutter sports mode, all with autofocus. And on that topic, the autofocus is quite effective. Very similar system to the X-T4. You're essentially getting their best AF system to date. Uh, the camera uses great tracking focus. I've been using that most of today and it's been fantastic. And the eye detect does work well too. So from sports, journalism, and some wildlife to portraits and family stuff, this camera can handle it all. Jordan here to talk about the video capabilities of the XS10, and it's based on the X-T30, which was our best in class. It's still got the great Eterna profile. It can do 4K up to 30 frames per second, can do 1080 now up to 240 frames per second, although the quality on that is quite rough. And one thing we love, if you kick this out through the HDMI port, you're gonna get a 10-bit 422 signal coming out of it. Now, some of the problems that we had with the X-T30 have also been addressed. It's gone from a two and a half mil sub-mini input to a normal 3.5 millimeter mini phone input. As well, the overheating limit has been extended. Before it was 10 minutes recording in a single 4K clip, now we're up to a standard half hour clip. So in order to test overheating, we put the camera in 4K 24P mode while we were driving. That kept the autofocus and image stabilization working. And we were actually able to record in room temperature for 42 minutes and 55 seconds. Now, there is a half hour record cutoff on the camera, so we did have to start two separate clips before the camera overheated and shut down. Then we gave it 10 minutes and started again. We were able to record eight minutes. So what that means is we have a much longer period before the camera will overheat while recording compared to some of the other Fuji ones. After it does overheat initially though, you're gonna to have to give it a lot of time before you're back up to full recording time. So Chris is filming me handheld with face detect autofocus turned on right now on the XS10. So it gives us a good chance to see the performance of that. Now it is really nice that we've got the autofocus with face and eye detection in that, but I do find every once in a while with the Fuji cameras, it'll just jump off in the background or foreground for no reason. It's generally quite good, but it can be a little bit unpredictable. 
As well, the IBIS on this, it's great if you're planning to maintain a static frame, but if you're walking with the camera or doing a deliberate pan, sometimes you'll find it can fight you a little bit, but you have to look at this as a full package for the price. I mean, you're getting 4K recording, in-body image stabilization, fully articulating screen. This thing has a tally lamp. It is a very complete package, and I think it's gonna make a lot of video shooters very happy. So by the soothing sounds, hopefully not overpowering sounds of the creek here, let's give you our final thoughts on the Fujifilm X-S10. I thoroughly enjoyed using this camera today. There's really not much to complain about. You know, the battery, we've complained about the MP126W battery life on the XT20s and XT30s and whatnot. And you know, absolutely 350 shots, super rated. I had to charge it in the car today to get through a day of shooting, but it's nice that we can USB charge it. Now, while we're on the topic of the X-T30, which is the better way to go, I honestly think that I would go the X-S10. Having the IBIS, having the tracking autofocus for me, I think those are huge benefits. And frankly, I actually like the control structure on this camera better than the X-T30. Now, the design is gonna polarize some people. I mean, the X-T30 is more affordable. It's absolutely classier looking, a really sexy camera. But if you can get past that, I feel like this camera is gonna give you better control structures and better features. Now the Sony a6400, the Canon M6 Mark II, those would be good solid competition for this camera. I do feel like both of those cameras have better tracking autofocus, uh, but otherwise I do feel like this has got the IBIS advantage, they basically all have the same battery life, and I feel like this handles better as a camera as far as controls go than the other two. Overall, I think the XS10 surprised me. It's lightweight, it's compact, and yet it's very capable. I've been calling it an entry-level camera all day, but I'd say it's really more of a mid-range price point. Is it gonna win DSLR users over to the mirrorless world? There's not a lot to complain about it. Anyways, I hope this helps you decide if the XS10 is good for you. Please subscribe, check out our Instagram and our Twitter feeds. Go to deepyearview.com, our sample gallery bill there. Thank you so much for joining us, we'll see you soon.